I'd say that I think everyone should have an experience like this. Realizing that everyone is not their story. Just because you say, I live here, I lost everything. That doesn't mean that they don't have a chance at doing something great in life too. And I like that City of Promise gives everyone a fair chance. Today we're going to learn about a Department of Education Promise Neighborhood Initiative designed to ensure that all children get what they need to succeed in school, work, and life. Join us today as we talk with Sarad Davenport, Director for City of Promise Charlottesville. Come on. Sarad, what is the City of Promise? So the City of Promise is a place-based initiative where as we work in a particular community on changing outcomes for young people. One of our mantras is that we're building a cradle to college and career pathway. And that means that uh, we're collectively working together as a community um, to build a pathway for young people and to give these kids the skills and tools they need to be successful. And how did the initiative come to Charlottesville? How did that happen? Great question. So there were a series of people in the community already thinking about this idea of how do we close the achievement gap? And that's a question that has been, um, you know, kind of rising up throughout the country. And then, you know, uh, Promise Neighborhoods um, issued uh, a grant. So um, Charlottesville was fortunate enough to get a planning grant from the Promise Neighborhood um, Institute with the Department of Education. To so. get everything started and going. Correct. After that, um, we got some support from individuals and also foundations have really come to the table to make sure that we can continue this type of work um, in this community. Who specifically benefits in the community from the initiative? Mainly our values are that we're child-centered, okay. but we're family-driven. We have about 300 um, children in this community that we work in. And right now, it's in specific neighborhoods, Correct. right? So, 10th and Page, okay. West Haven, and Star Hill communities. Right, and everyone needs to be involved in order for this to work, right? Correct. Yeah. So you have parents. Right, so we have youth. parents, we have youth, um, and I also say we have systems, institutions, and agencies. So the schools are critical to the work. Um, yeah. City Council um, has been supportive of the initiative and the city manager's office, um, but more importantly, the neighbors in the community and the people who really want to see this community um, provide an environment where kids can have what they need to be successful. Um, and of course, the young people who are the beneficiaries, but also the ones that are going to have to ultimately um, do the work so that they can be successful and have that um, individual determination to um, achieve their goals and their dreams. Yeah, and volunteers. Right, so we have an awesome cadre of volunteers that come from people who are retired that just really want to give back to their community. Um, we have volunteers from the University of Virginia, um, from Madison House, mm -hmm. who come and help with the after school programs that we run. It doesn't get done just by staff, but it's a whole community coming together to make sure that um, we have um, everything in place so that kids and everyone can be successful. The City of Promise has helped me in a lot of areas of my life as far as taking me out of the country. I had never been on a plane, I'd never gone out the country, helping me get to college. They've given me tutoring and they've given me like summer internships. They've helped me enrich myself more than I thought that I would ever actually be enriched. Some of us were failing and some of us wasn't, but then when we started working with City of Promise, it actually helped us bring our grades and stuff back up, like me. It helped me bring my grades up, and I was focused in school more than I was at first. Talk about the programming that happens throughout the school year. Gotcha. There's homework help, there's tutoring, but we also try to infuse all of that with extracurricular activities that include um, science, technology, um, and especially art. We have a big, heavy arts focus. I think sometimes with STEM, people leave out the arts a lot, but we try to make sure that the arts is infused in all of our work. So with Lighthouse Studio, they did a film called Food Deliveries in West Haven, and it was about restaurants um, that, for some reason or another, do not deliver to West Haven. Um, or the community, but they did find those who do deliver to the community. So it's almost um, a comedic in the end when we find out who really does. But they won the Virginia Award for 
um, best documentary, best short documentary for students. Yeah, and working with John Durth and Correct. the jazz department at yeah. UVA. I mean, yeah. that the, the great thing about our volunteers is they're willing to come out into the community and to be a part of the community and to really work with us um, and the kids and their families. Talk about these different programs. So for the younger kids, what do you all have? Right, so we have Enroll to Launch right. for the younger kids. So the Enroll to Launch program is for our kids who are, um, they haven't entered school yet. But um, there are programs that get them ready for school. We have a parent education class. Um, we also have automatic entry into the city schools three and four year old program. If our parents um, get their applications in on time, which sets the parents up to have a good relationship with the schools and the kids can get into the system and get used to being in the school environment really early. And not only that, um, you know, studies show that they do better in their um, kindergarten and first grade benchmarks when they have that early childhood yeah. um, experience. And then, okay, and then you have sort of more elementary, middle school age programs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have Enroll to Launch and then we have Enroll to Serve. So Enroll to Serve is um, what I call non-clinical case management. Um, it's kind of like um, mentoring on steroids to make sure that this kid um, is on the right track and has a plan and what we call a game plan uh, for success. And then uh, we also have Enroll to Connect. So Enroll to Connect is our global strategy. And these are where our partners really come in, where we're really trying to connect kids, particularly to out of school time activities with the great offerings that Charlottesville has. That's part of what we see as our added value. I'm an English major, creative writing as a concentration. And I want to be a screenwriter, like a scriptwriter for TV shows and director, producer, and have a publishing company and be an activist. <laughs> After school, I want to go to college and I'm still filling out applications for colleges and jobs. So that way I can stay on track with school and everything else. The Check and Connect program is um, really about um, attendance. We measure um, attendance, particularly in the grades six through nine, because we know that kids um, drop out of school mentally before they drop out of school physically. Mm -hmm. So we are really working on finding out the strategies to keep kids engaged in the school environment when they're in the middle school, such that they, when they get to high school, they're already engaged and they don't um, feel alienated in any way and they can really um, thrive in the high school environment. So working on those things in the background often strengthens them when they go to the school. And what we found is that they're more successful and they feel more confident and willing to go and to get up and go in the morning. Yeah. So. Well, for example, in the summertime, some of the programming includes chess. Correct. And you've had students that didn't even know that they were that great at chess and they're, yeah. and it's giving them this, this whole different way of thinking and confidence. And yeah. so talk a little bit about summer programs. So the only thing that we don't do in summer programming, they don't have homework. Yeah. Um, we do try to focus on summer reading, but the chess is just awesome. I, I, I like chess because I believe that it really changes the architecture of people's thinking, like their brain architecture and how they think helps the kids to um, think about long-term consequences. Oh, I think that's great. And then tennis, you have tennis. Right. Different sports, but tennis is a big one now. It's taken a little while for us to get to where people have really, you know, thought that, yeah, tennis, I want to do that. We've done other things like martial arts, but now, you know, tennis is really um, taken off too, and we hope to continue to grow that. They go to the General Assembly. Correct. You have two kids who went to Africa. Mm -hmm. This right. is incredible stuff. So we have a youth council, um, and lately they've been very active. Um, they go to the General Assembly. They've been to the General Assembly twice to meet with legislators. Um, this year they met with the general counsel to the governor. They also met with the deputy secretary of um, Homeland Security. So they were able to meet with those folks down there and ask questions. Our kids are tough. I've done so many different crazy things that I never thought I'd be doing at this age. I was a panelist for Bernie Sanders when he came to town and going to the General Assembly was really cool for the first time. Um, last year I went for my third time and starting at such a young age lobbying, um, it was really cool because we're learning about it in school and I'm doing it and so it's like when the teacher's like, so do you guys know what lobbying is? I'm like, ooh, ooh, me, yeah, I know, because I go every year. And so um, 
you get to have insight and you get to speak on behalf of the people in your neighborhood who aren't able to attend as well. So it's really, it's really cool. We did a group called Sisters of Nia and we learned about Hanukkah and then we got on different subjects about staying healthy, how to keep your body fit and exercising daily. I went to Ghana, Africa with the Sister City delegation in 2013. Before I was, I was aware that, you know, there was, there was still countries in poverty, you know, I knew that I was more fortunate than other people, but actually going there and seeing little kids not necessarily having a lot of clothes or being fully clothed and hungry, it made me feel way more grateful than when I went in to Ghana. Our spectrum of young people we work with is from zero to 22. So this year was an amazing year. We had 11 students from the community that we've worked with in some way or another that, um, that graduated, um, and more than half of them will go on to um, post-secondary education in some two-year, some four-year colleges. So we're very excited about them and their ability to reflect success and you know, kind of bring that story back to the community for the kids who are coming behind them. So the more we can create a culture of achievement, um, the better. And you have a garden. We do. <laughs> and that came about because a neighbor right. is a gardener. Right. So we had a lot next to this building that we're in now, which is new. It's at the epicenter of the community. And this neighbor really wanted to get into gardening. And um, we were able to get some um, lumber donated from some local uh, merchants and um, and we're now starting to produce a harvest, so things are starting to grow and people are taking things home. Every so. And everyone in the community can just stop in the garden and take something home hey, for dinner. Just take what I you love need. that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Oh, Sarad, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, City of Promise is good for me because it's helping me. I think it's a really good like community thing. I've learned a lot. I've met a lot of new people. Um, I've had a lot of great experiences, and through all of that, I've become a better person. 